Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to Spongebob Conspiracy number four, The Evolution Theory by Alex Bale. Now, I have not seen this, but this conspiracy is probably about answering all of the unanswered questions from the show. Like, for example, why is Mr. Krabs' daughter a whale? Uh, I guess... The, I, I'm guessing that's mainly one of them. That's probably going to be one of them. I don't know about the, what other ones, but I've heard that this one answers a, a ton of unanswered questions. But yeah, anyways, guys, reach in the description. Make sure to Alex Bale. Link, so in the description. Let's just get right into it. Are the Bikini Bottom citizens the result of nuclear radiation? Oh! Who is Pearl's mother? Oh, what yeah. is the Krabby Patty? Oh, okay, so yeah, just answer. These asking, are by far like, the three biggest questions. Answering the all the SpongeBob unanswered Square questions. Pants. And today, I'm going to be answering all three of them. And I'm actually gonna pause. I already know the first one. Actually, the whole like nuclear blast thing. Cause, yeah, I know about that theory. There's a theory that the Bikini Bottom residents are mutated from radiation, and I think it's because in the real world. Somebody, I don't know who, I don't know much about this, but I know that someone or, s yeah, like some country bombed an ocean with like atom bombs or something. And basically the theory is, is that Bikini Bottom was that ocean and that radiation caused the animals to like mutate into them. So that, so I think that's the theory and I'm guessing that's what, for the first one, that's what he's going to be using to answer that. Now, for the other two, I have no idea. Maybe the secret formula thing with uh, cannibalism, because I think there was that theory that it's actually made of crab or something like that, and yeah, that that uh, they're, you know, cannibals. <laughs> and more with just one theory. Get ready for the darkest SpongeBob oh, conspiracy you'll theory. ever see. This is oh, it the evolution theory. Okay. I thought it'd go one by one. We're back with another Yo, SpongeBob Wii music. Oh my god. Guess I'm the SpongeBob guy now. That's that's all I make. You guys sure love these True. SpongeBob theories. Alex Bale out with another video. The makers of SpongeBob interfere, put in their own message to brainwash you people. Squilliam sends the doctor in. He's not really a doctor. He's just trying to infiltrate that little round thing on his head there. Oh my god. Thank god for Alex Bale. Look at that. He's helping me prove my point. You know what? That is awesome. Maybe you love call. them a little too much. You know, I got other videos, right? I, I, I make films and stuff too. Anyone want to watch those? Anyways, by far <laughs> the most popular SpongeBob theory out there is the Bikini Atoll nuclear radiation theory. Yeah. It's pretty simple. It's been confirmed that Bikini Bottom is actually beneath a real life place called Bikini Atoll. From 1946 to 1958, the United States did nuclear testing, yeah, the United devastating States. the area and leaving it radioactive even to this day. The theory states that the reason why the citizens of Bikini Bottom can talk and have formed advanced societies is because of mutations caused by these nuclear tests. And that's about the whole theory. Even though there's tons and tons of videos about it, none of them actually go in depth with it or really look through the show for evidence. But y'all know that if True. Alex Bale is making a theory on it, then it's not going to be some baby surface level analysis. I will watch every single episode of Spongebob. I will read every page of the goddamn Wikipedia. True. If I'm making a theory on it, then you guys know it's going to be good. And once I really started looking into actually. this theory, I realize that there is so much more here than anyone thinks. Get ready, because today we're going to be solving the biggest mysteries in the history of SpongeBob SquarePants and changing the way you look at the entire show. So without further ado, let's begin the theory. Part 1, the Bikini Atoll. Okay, yeah. In order to find out whether the Bikini Atoll theory is true, we first have to determine whether fish talking and being so intelligent is unique to Bikini Bottom, or if that's just the way the Spongebob universe works. You know, it true. could just be that all animals in this world are able to talk, and that's completely normal because at the end of the day, Spongebob is still just a cartoon. Well, if we take a look at Season 10, Episode 10, Feral Friends, we get a bit of a hint about how the Spongebob world works. In this episode, a green moon appears and oh, transforms yeah. all the characters oh, yeah. into less cartoony, real-life versions of themselves. Just like in real life, they can't talk and end up trying to eat each other. The French narrator is watching all of this unfold and he says this very important line. I have been monitoring the behavior of the green moon all day. It is called Neptune's moon. 
every 100 years, it de-evolves everyone in Bikini Bottom into primal fish. Every 100 years, it de-evolves everyone de in Bikini Bottom into primal fish. So this implies that the characters in Bikini Bottom are more evolved and were once like these primal fish. But this doesn't prove that the evolution only exists in Bikini Bottom. It could still be a worldwide phenomenon. Remember that bonus DVD clip I found in my television theory? It was about humans studying fish in Bikini Bottom because of their intelligence. Oh, yeah. Land loving scientists have tried to learn the secrets of intelligence. Their studies led them to the sea, where the citizens of one undersea colony demonstrated a genius so enormous, the scientists felt compelled to record their actions for use in teaching mankind how to live better. This makes it sound an awful lot like the fish in Bikini Bottom actually are uniquely evolved, and it's not some worldwide phase. True. Then, in the SpongeBob 20-year anniversary special, SpongeBob's Big Birthday oh, Blowout, yeah, they we go get a major piece of evidence they go into the theory. SpongeBob real world, right? and Patrick take a tour of the surface world, and eventually go to a fish store and see some very realistic less evolved fish oh really oh i've what not kind seen of this monsters would want to keep fish folk in jail like this they're so beautiful they can't talk back to spongebob and patrick and they're actually able to swim freely through the water instead of being affected by gravity they are clearly showing us that both evolved and primitive fish exist in this universe at the same time now sometimes we've seen bikini bottom oh yeah kind of realistic fish like this but only when they're out of water never while they're still in water like these fish we even see this again in the beginning of the third spongebob movie sponge on the run the movie opens with a coral reef full of these realistic primal fish but eventually Eventually, we get to Bikini Bottom, where the more evolved fish live. So there you go. Direct oh! proof that the citizens of Bikini Bottom are uniquely evolved. This is a very deliberate Interesting. choice for the creators to make. So I guess that kind of confirms the Bikini Atoll theory. Theory confirmed! We did it! Woo! Well... Let's hold on for a second. As much as I'd love to call this theory complete, there's actually one major piece of evidence that gives me some resistance. Something I've never seen anyone else bring up when talking about this theory. Prehistoric Bikini Bottom. We've seen episodes like UGG or SB129 oh, that yeah. show Bikini Bottom millions of years in the past, but we still see evolved versions of SpongeBob oh, and yeah. Patrick. Sure, they may not be super intelligent or advanced, but they're still clearly way more evolved than the primitive, realistic versions we see in Feral Friends or in the Fish Store. So, how are we seeing these evolutions millions of years before the Bikini Atoll tests? Well, unfortunately, I think the only conclusion is that the Bikini Atoll theory just is it true? I mean, clearly something has caused Bikini Bottom citizens to be uniquely evolved, there's no denying that. But whatever caused it took place millions of years ago and couldn't have been the Bikini Atoll nuclear test. True. Then, what really caused the evolution? In the entire show, the only thing we've seen that directly affects the evolution of characters is the Green Moon and Feral Friends. <laughs> Except the French narrator specifically calls it Neptune's Moon. It is called Neptune's Moon. Yeah. Named after the ruler of the seven seas, King Neptune. King Neptune Dang. is a character who's been around design, since the beginning right. of the sea. He's a character who the Bikini Bottom citizens view as their god. And he's a character oh, who has the go. ability to change fish into other forms. Oh yeah, true. What the? Nope. King Neptune used his magic to turn the fish of the sea into more evolved subjects for him to rule over. He's the one who's been behind it all this time. Ooh, now, okay. I could spend this entire video talking about King Neptune and his weird continuity and contradictions in the show, but I'll save that for another theory. Oh, what yeah. I'd much rather talk about are the yeah, there's so many of designs evolved of and primitive fish coexisting in the sea. Now, we know that this evolution isn't specific to just Bikini Bottom. We've seen different cities and places far yeah, across the Yeah, I was that thinking about that. Fish, which makes sense because the marine life in Bikini Bottom has evolved to resemble humans, so it's no surprise that just like humans, they've expanded beyond Bikini Bottom and colonized other areas of the sea. Mm. But now, I have an interesting question for you. What is the relationship between evolved fish and primitive unevolved fish? Well, they probably just peacefully coexist in the sea without bothering each other. You know, just like real life humans and animals. Wait a second. No. Yeah, no. That leads into the... I know what happens. I know exactly what... I have a feeling. So, my best guess is that this leads into the Crab Patty secret formula by the fact that they use fish, like unevolved fish, in the sandwich, and that's what they eat. Maybe. Maybe. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. In Season 3, Episode 10, the Krusty Krab training video, there is this hilarious, absurd moment when they're talking about Mr. Krabs. After the war, 
crab stayed secluded in a deep depression oh, yeah, the war. that seemed endless. Like, what war happened in Bikini Bottom? They just tell us this and then completely drop it. But with this new context, is it possible that crabs fought in a war against these primitive wild fish of the sea? I mean, let's remember in Feral Friends, some of those de-evolved fish were massive compared to the evolved fish, and they immediately started attacking each other. Ah, uh, the battle for the survival of the fittest rages on in the animal kingdom. So yeah, in order for the True. Bikini Bottom citizens to survive and expand, they would probably break into some kind of war. And from the sounds of it, this war must have been pretty brutal to put Mr. Krabs into such a deep depression. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Is there actually any evidence that proves the war Mr. Krabs fought in was specifically this evolutionary war? Well, through the few flashbacks we get, we know that Mr. Krabs served in the Navy. And yes, they were sailing ships on an ocean, even though they're already underwater. This is actually a real-life phenomenon where certain oh, yeah. parts of the sea can have a higher level of salinity, and it looks like an underwater Yeah, I know ocean. about it. Yeah, Shout out Miss Parks, my high school marine biology teacher. We also know from maps of Bikini Bottom that the town is surrounded by this underwater ocean. So that places Mr. Krabs' war outside of Bikini Bottom where this evolutionary war would have to take place. Then if we took a look at Mr. Krabs' home, we see it is full of memorabilia from his past days in the Navy. But hidden within here is something that will absolutely blow your mind and answer one of the biggest questions in the show. Hanging there on his wall is a picture of a massive whale next to a ship. You don't think that could be... No, it can't be... Oh, what? Pearl's mother? Pearl is Mr. Krabs' whale daughter. The show never really explains how a crab can be the father of a whale, but most people just assume she was adopted. People have been speculating about who Pearl's biological mother is for years, and I think we finally just found our answer. We see two photos of this whale on a ship in Season 3, Episode 9, just one episode before we find out Mr. Krabs fought in a war. Since this is among all of Mr. Krabs' Navy oh, okay. stuff, I think we can assume that this is something he encountered and not just some random picture of a whale on a ship above the ocean. The whale is massive compared to the ship. We've seen adult whales in Bikini Bottom before, but they are nothing compared to the size of this whale. True. This has a much closer resemblance to Pearl when she de-evolved in Feral Friends and became massive. So this has to be an unevolved primitive whale, and the picture clearly shows them fighting. Not only does this prove that there was a war between evolved and primitive fish, but Mr. Krabs definitely fought in it. But this also implies something very dark. Mr. Krabs killed Pearl's mother. Dang, okay. Was not the expecting only direct that, reference we get in the show to Pearl's mother is one of Mr. Krabs' many sayings, Mother of Pearl. <laughs> mother of Pearl! Mother of Pearl! Holy Mother of Pearl! He uses it in places True. like Holy Crap or Dear God, only saying it when something truly shocking or terrible happens, because he knows the terrible thing that happened to Pearl's mother. Why did Mr. Krabs go into such a deep depression after the war? Because he's haunted by what he's done, and the smoking harpoon to okay, prove it is not right there on theory. his wall. So, that leaves us with an important question. Why did he adopt Pearl? After he killed her mother, he probably realized she had an infant Dang, daughter who had the evolutionary genes. Instead of leaving her to die, he adopted her as his own, all while keeping the dark secret that he was responsible for her mother's death. Woo! Childhood ruined yet? Well, don't worry. Yeah, time for this <laughs> thank you, Alex. Th thank now's you. Now's your chance thank to you, Alex. yourself before thank things you. get really dark. Things get really dark. Oh, that's actually what it's Still called. Still here? Okay, so here's a fun question. What's the deal with all the pets in Bikini Bottom? How come most fish are basically humans, but a snail or a worm acts like a pet? Well, just like humans have domesticated wild animals, it should be no surprise that evolved fish have domesticated primitive fish as pets. Unlike the massive primitive fish that the Bikini Bottom citizens had to go to war with, there's also smaller primitive fish like jellyfish, snails, spirit worms, seahorses, and clams that the Bikini Bottom citizens were able to form a symbiotic relationship with. Aww, and I thought you said this was gonna be the dark part, Alex. Oh, no. They're living peacefully together. That's that's nice. Okay, okay, you got me. Here's another fun question. Where do the citizens of Bikini Bottom get their food? I mean, sure, some of it is plant-based, yeah, yeah. but there sure does seem to be an awful lot of meat-based food under the sea. I think you know where I'm going with this. The Bikini yeah. Bottom citizens eat yeah, primitive yeah. fish. Haha, <laughs> it's not cannibalism if they're less evolved than you, right? There's no moral dilemma there. In Season 3, Episode 13, we see direct proof of this when the characters go fishing for primitive clams. This is something completely normal in this world. And then there's the chum bucket. Oh, is that right? Which sells chum. Chum. Chum is literally just ground up fish. The show isn't even hiding this. 
Now, we don't really see too much of the meat harvesting side of Bikini Bottom, and I'm not surprised they're keeping it on the DL, you know, with the whole cannibalism thing, but there is one secret to making food that is kept more secret than anything in Bikini Bottom. The Krabby Patty the best secret kept formula. Secret in the entire show. You already know what I'm going to say. The Krabby Patty secret formula. Throughout the show, there's yeah. been lots of contradictory evidence about the Krabby Patty secret formula. In Season 4, Episode 7, Mr. Krabs says it's an old family recipe. Your mother knows the Krabby Patty formula? Of course she does! It's an old Krabs family recipe! But in Season 5, Episode 1, apparently Mr. Krabs discovered it on his own by accidentally mixing random ingredients together. Yeah. I've done it! I discovered the perfect patty batter! Sometimes it's a secret formula, sometimes it's a book, sometimes it's a secret sauce, and any glimpse we get at the formula is just random nonsense. Oh yeah, There is true. a ton of contradictory evidence out there, but I think this might all be intentional. In order to throw people off, Mr. Krabs has spread misinformation about the Krabby Patty formula. In fact, he's already done this in Season 3, Episode 18, by hiding a fake formula for Plankton to find that says he's the secret ingredient. Mixed together true. with the most important ingredient of all! Four heaping pounds of freshly ground plankton? Oh yeah, true. And the contradictions aren't just inside the show. Even one of the Spongebob crew members once said that Krabby Patties are vegetarian and contain no meat. But I've always been a little suspicious about what the creators say. They've also said that they're not allowed to show fish as food. Except they clearly do with chum, clam fishing, and all the many, many gags where fish turn oh, into Oh yeah, the it's gags. It's almost like they're not allowed by Nickelodeon to publicly acknowledge this because that could create a controversy, but they could still sneak this dark secret into the show. So. What is the true secret ingredient? Where does the meat really come it's from? Crab. It's strange. We never really see Mr. Krabs get the meat delivered, or at least go out himself to get it. It's almost like he has all the meat he needs stockpiled somewhere. Hmm, what primitive meat can Mr. Krabs have access to? It's crabs. Maybe he's been holding onto something from the war. Hmm. What could Mr. Krabs oh, have killed during the war that he doesn't want anyone to find out about? Something big enough to supply him with meat for years without needing more. True. Hmm, what could that be? You really gonna make me say it? Yeah. Mr. Krabs is using Pearl's dead mother's carcass to make Krabby Patties. Woo! We did it! Yeah, we solved the mystery! We did it! <laughs> I'm so glad! Yeah! Season 1, Episode 15, Sleepy Time. Mr. Krabs has a dream that he's on a boat fishing for a massive dollar. This is his memory of killing Pearl's mother. Except now, all he sees her as is money. And take it. Dang, that's really dark. Yeah, that is dark. the dollar. What you doing, Mr. Krabs? Hey! Picking Neptune's bucket! What are you talking about? I'm talking about cold hard flipping cash! It's the mighty Moby Dollar! Moby Dollar. A direct reference to Moby Dick. Yeah, a yeah. story I about think that was mainly a just whale. A joke, are you though? kidding me? I think it was a joke. And that is the evolution theory. I warned you guys this would be a dark one. The Bikini Atoll theory. King Neptune. Pearl's mother, the Krabby Patty formula, yeah. we hit everything in this theory. Even if you don't agree with all of it, you gotta admit, a lot of this makes sense. Eugene Krabs' aspirations for money it, and it does, I'd do say. terrible, terrible things. At least his love for Pearl seems to be real. I don't know. So I, just don't, I just don't like the idea of my good childhood being And even though like Pearl's that, mother probably provides tons of meat, eventually he's gonna I'd run say. out and he'll have to face what he's done. Well, unless, of course, there's another whale he has access to. Nope. Nope, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Mr. Krabs wouldn't do that. He loves Pearl. He's not just raising oh, her for Krabby Patty meat. Even Mr. Krabs isn't that much of a monster. From every side I've ever seen to the sweetest sound I've heard. Oh, please don't. I'd gladly give up everything for all the money that I've earned. Dang, that lyric. Good. Well, already then, that's the end of that theory. Just gonna end it here before yeah, there's good. any more Thank dark you. plot twists. You guys have been insanely supportive with these Thank SpongeBob you. theories, so I guess I have to make more. I've been your host, Alex Bale. Thanks for watching. Let's go. There's like an ending clip. Yeah, apparently last time I skipped it. I thought it was just kind of like a promo for like something he was making, but I guess not. I guess it's like a promo for like the next theory. I thought there was going to be somebody showing up behind that fridge door.
uh, hey, just want to let you know that I, uh, I think I'm going to take a break from the Spongebob videos for a little bit. But I said don't. Uh, it's not you. I mean, I mean, the videos are great. People, people love them. It's just, I think I want to go back to making actual films for a bit. Uh, okay then. Uh, thanks for everything. I guess I'll just, I'll just see you around. Sounds like Patrick. What? When I found you, you were unnoticed and unloved. But now you have millions of views. You have sponsors. Why would you forsake them? I just, you know, I don't, I don't want to really make these videos forever. You know, I don't want to be known as the, the SpongeBob guy. <laughs> oh, okay. My boy, you really think they will care about your little films? I am your muse. I have given you the gift of knowledge. If you wish to go back to anonymity, then be my guest. But I know who you really are. Ooh, okay. Okay, that's interesting. So I actually like where he's going with this. He's basically turning these theories or these like conspiracy type videos into sort of a series type thing where there's someone making them do it and they give them like the idea, I guess. That's actually an interesting idea. That's actually kind of cool, turning it into sort of like a plot and story just to make it more interesting. And that actually is cool. That's actually really cool. I, I did not know that's what he was going for. That's really cool. That actually is really good. But uh, yeah, anyways, guys, this theory was, I'd say it was solid. I enjoyed it. I think it makes sense when you really look at all the evidence. To be fair, though, I do feel like it, it could be easily debunked. And I don't, I don't know if I want to agree with it either. It's very dark and it, it just ruins my childhood, man. I, I can't. I literally can't. But yeah, no, I, I honestly think it, it is a solid theory. The evidence... Yeah, the evidence is good. It, it makes sense when... Well, I'm, shoot, my brain is not letting me talk. I, basically, what I'm trying to say is the evidence supports the theory very well. I think it. I think it's solid. I think it's solid. It makes it credible. But uh, yeah, anyways, guys, enjoy the like, the share, my channel. See you next one. Bye!